Uh, yeah, just a bit of background. Uh, I'm a network engineer, server support guy by trade. Uh, I spent, spent quite a few years in that line of work. Um, these days I sell electronic kits for a living. Uh, it's a bit of, bit of, a, bit of a jump, um, but I'm kind of just going to go over some of, some of the uh, considerations, some of the choices I made. Um, yeah, there's, there's pros and cons, there's pitfalls you can fall into. Um, but essentially, yes, this is, uh, this is uh, so, 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 some of the things that you can use to turn your, your hobby project into, into money. Now, has anyone here ever designed any projects themselves? Yeah, great. In that case, I can skip over number one. So you've all designed something. Um, are you, are you a lot of people are, are likely to say to you, hey, that's, that's great, I like, I like your, your widget, whatever it is. You could sell that. Of course you could, anyone could. Um, whether you can sell it for a living, whether you can make money out of it, whether, whether you even want to, whether you just want to do it for the, for the, for the, for the cred, for, the, uh, um, for, 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 for giving back to the community or whatever, that, that's fine. But if you've got to pay a mortgage, if you've got cats to feed, etc., uh, you're going to have to make a little bit of profit at the end of the day. So, so, so how do we get from? Well, so, so that that particular ball there, that's that was my RC twenty fourteen Z eighty computer in its very earliest iteration um, before it became the kit that now pays my mortgage and feeds my cats. Right. So, business time. Um, there's, 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 there's quite a few things to think about if you are going down the, the route of starting a business. Um, you know, do, you, do you want to be a sole trader? Do you want to be a limited company? Are you going into partnership with anyone else? Um, now, as, as, as to what works for you, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a different for everyone. Um, so, so, personally, I've gone down the limited company route. Um, that also means things like you know, I've, got, I've, got, I've got an accountant, I've got a trademark for my RC2014 van and stuff like that. So there are implications there that you might want to look at which, which might suit what your widget does. It might not. You might look at it and say, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about trademark, I don't need an accountant, I'm only doing it part-time or whatever. Um, so yeah, they, these these aren't a list of everything you have to do, but it's things worth worth looking at. Um, yeah, getting get business insurance is worth worth looking into. Uh, that, that things like premises. Are are you able to work from home? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you do can you build your kits or whatever on a kitchen table? Do you need more space? Have you got to go and hire a unit? Have you got to get an office? Um, I'm I'm lucky enough that I could dedicate. A spare bedroom and the garage to to the to the uh, kits which I make. It's taking over the house a fair bit, but at the moment I don't have to look at uh, commercial properties. But that that's a whole new consideration to to look into for some people. Um, you want to look at things like getting a, a business bank account and stuff like that as well, um, well and, and uh, setting up a PayPal business bank account because. PayPal doesn't like you using your personal account for business stuff. Um, so this is even before we've ever sold any of our kits. We, we still need to look at all of these kind of things. Um, you've probably got to put, put some money into it as well. Now, whether, whether, whether you've got a whole load of money in the bank that you can support yourself while, while you build the company, or do you need to take out a loan for it? Um, there are angel investors out there for startup companies that will want a chunk of your company in in in, in return for putting some money into it. So um, th there's there's a few different ways for you to finance it. Um, I I personally took the the bootstrapping approach, whereby I sold only a very very few balls first of all, which meant I had very minimal investment. I sold a few balls. I got some money in from that that allowed me to buy a few more boards. That got me some more money. I could then start buying components, sell those and build it up from there. So my initial investment was probably 50 quid for 
PCB, so it's not, not a huge investment, depending on what kind of device you're, you're wondering about making. You might, you might need to stump up money for tooling, for jigs or um, whatever. So you might, you might need to look at, at funding it a little bit differently. Now, wh when, you're, when you're coming to sell it, uh, where, where are you going to sell it? Now, there's obviously l lots of places you can sell, sell stuff online. Um, if, if you're, if you're going to be hosting your own website, that's, 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 that's a whole route to go down in terms of are you a website builder? Do you want to maintain all the security, stuff like that? Or do you want to use someone else's website? Um, as you can tell by the T-shirt, I sell through Tindy. So if you go onto Tindy, you can find my kits on there. Um, for me, that takes out all the hassle of running a web store. Uh, they sort out all of the invoicing, they do the payments, uh, I get delivery notes that I just need to print out. Um, so all of that stuff is taken care of, which, which is great. Um, you could also do similar things via eBay, via Etsy, um, various Shopify type accounts, stuff like that. Um, or if you're looking at, you know, it, it could be that thing, the thing you're wanting to sell, you actually want a high street store. Um, so maybe if you're looking at business premises with a, with a shop front. Um, or, uh, you know, are you going around to trade events selling at make affairs or selling through, through other, other type of direct interaction with people? Um, in terms of getting yourself set up, you've also got to look at the, the marketing side of things. Now, one what, 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 what of the things that I notice with just about every other company I work for is the, the marketing team was always the, the, the enemies of the engineers. They're always coming up with all these ideas, we do this, that and the other. And the engineers are like, oh, no, we want to do this, we'll just make stuff. It turns out if you're starting your, up your own business, you are a marketing person as well as the engineer. So you've got to start looking at things like promoting your social media brand, coming up with logos, doing, doing all that stuff which may not be the sort of thing that engineers necessarily want to do. Um, so you've got to get all, all of your um, promotional stuff all, all ready to go so that people can find you. If, if people can't find your, your, your kits, if they've never heard of you, they're not, not going to buy them. So unfortunately, marketing, it is a dirty word, but it's got to be done. So we come come to the pricing. Now, if you if you spend out ten pound on a bunch of components, make a board, you could sell that for ten pound. Any anyone could sell at cost price, um, but that's that's not going to pay the mortgage. That's not going to keep keep you keep you going, keep you developing more stuff. So you need to look at what what the realistic markup is. Now, typically, the the rule of thumb is, is two and a half times the cost of your bomb. So if all the parts cost you £10, sell it for 25 That's going to be in the kind of ballpark that will cover, cover su some of your losses, like um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be some components that you get which, are, uh, yeah, which, which, which don't make it into production. Yeah, there's, I get a lot of connectors from China, some of those haven't got all the right pins in them or whatever. So you've got some, some stock write off, you've got you've got to build your prototypes, you've got to um, you know go go through iterations of stuff. So so that so that so that's that two and a half times the cost of your bomb comes out to amortise some of what you're spending on all the other parts of it. Um, there's, and there's also things like the, the quantity discount. If 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 you buy one chip, or you buy a thousand chips, all well the cost for a thousand is a lot cheaper per chip. Um, but initially, from day one, I wasn't looking at buying a thousand Z80 CPUs. That was, yeah, it was a ridiculous number. I was buying five at a time. Um, so I based my prices on on relatively low low quantities of stuff. Um, with with some of the things I buy now, I'm buying a few a few reels of capacitors with three thousand capacitors on them at a time, they work out way cheaper than 
the initial ones when I was buying them 50 at a time. Um, so you need to look at thi things like that. Um, I've got on air current the currency fluctuations as well. Um, things like PCBs come from China, so the price of those will vary according to the pound against the dollar. Um, also, because I sell through Tindy, Tindy's a, an American website, so I sell in US dollars. That means that the price that I actually sell my kits for, it's not the same price today as it is tomorrow or yesterday because fluctuations. So you need to look at that, build build those kind of equations into your into your margin so that you don't price it at the cheapest price you possibly can and then find there's a dip in fluctuation and you're losing money. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit worth taking into account. Uh, that, then, then, then you've got to start to uh, produce your kits or your product um, in, ter in terms of buying, buying a stock. Um, Depending what 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 it is you're buying, so, some some things are next day delivery, other things might take three four weeks, six weeks, even longer for some more specialised chips. So you need to take your order times into account. Um, you've got you've got to, you've got to pay for the goods up front as a general rule. Um, so before you can actually sell the kits, you've got to buy buy all the components. You've got to store the components. Um, so that, that's that's a picture there. I've got rows and rows of uh, tubes full of full of chips and chips and sockets. Uh, so that there's 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 a probably two and a half three thousand pounds worth of chips there that takes up quite a big chunk of space. So you need to look at you know can you can you dedicate the space and the money to get yourself set up for that? Um, are you are you making a are you, are you making a, 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 a product which needs to be assembled? Have you got to solder it yourself? Are you, are you sending it out to manufacturers for them to solder? Um, so you need to look at, at that kind of things or building up the kits. Are you going to sit, sit? Are you going to sit, sit around the kitchen table on a Sunday night putting components in bags, or are you going to get that done in China? Are you you're going to uh, piecemeal it out to other people to do? Um, so again, that's something worth worth uh, considering there. So assuming that you've got all your marketing right, you've got your, your pricing right, uh, you produce your kits, but, but once you've sold them, it's like, great, I've sold a kit, now I've got to ship it. Um, again, there's, there's, there's more to, to consider there, like the packaging. Um, well, one of the things I discovered fairly early on is that if yeah, the, the Royal Mail has the large letter size, if you can keep your, your packaging to within 25 millimetres, that goes as a large letter. If this, if this box was three or four millimetres higher, that's a parcel, and that costs a lot more to post. So you want to make sure that you get your, your, your packaging down to the minimum size that you can Bearing in mind, you've got to have suitable um, the, 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 the packaging to protect your components. Um, yeah, you know, that, that could be bubble wrap, it could be ESD bags for chips or whatever. Um, so you need to consider your, your, your packaging and, and, the, and the cost of postage, um, particularly if you're shipping around the world. Um, it does cost a lot of money to send to some countries other countries not not quite so much so that's something else to take into account uh, then, then, then of course you've actually got got to get the money now are you are you selling at a make a fair and people have handed over cash to you in which case you, you've got to get yourself set up to be able to deal with with cash or take your PayPal um, as, as I mentioned earlier setting up a PayPal business account is it's relatively straightforward um, yeah, there, there, there are the PayPal devices which take credit cards now, so that is actually quite, quite, quite straightforward. Uh, so if you do sell through Make Affairs or whatever, and people want to pay by credit card, that's that's fairly easy to do. Um, if you're looking at selling to, to bigger customers, they might be wanting to do bank transfer. Um, so yeah, you need to look at that side of things. 
Uh, what, what's, 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 what's you sold it and all, all, all your customers have got your product in their hands? It's like, right, great, that's not the end of it. You've got to offer support. Um, there's, yeah, the, the instructions and documentation is a, is a big, big thing. Um, I, know, I know mine is far from perfect, but, but there's a lot worse out there, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, you've, you've got to spend time on, on documenting your product, writing a FAQ, uh, doing troubleshooting tips. Even, even with all of that, you will still get customers that buy your kit, buy your product, put it all together, it doesn't work. Have they tried this? Have they tried that? You've got to hold their hand, take them through a few steps. So all of that is some of your time that you could be selling other stuff, but you've got to spend your time on supporting the people that you've sold your kits to. Um, and you know, they, they, with uh, some people, they only want to get in, in contact with you via, via Twitter or via email. Um, I use Google Groups a lot as well, but there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you've got to be ready for your customers to talk to you as, as, they, as they want to and need to. Um, you, will, you will sometimes get customers which just aren't happy with a product or for whatever reason they need a refund or there's, you know, kits do get lost in the post. As a general rule, I found the Royal Mail really good, only a few, a few packages go missing. Um, but that's still a few packages that if you're selling your £10 kit for £10, well, you've lost £10 there. That's why you need the markup to cover those odd losses. Um, and as far as it goes, it's, it's a no point if a, if a customer comes to you and says, oh, this package didn't turn up. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's really no point arguing and fighting with them and saying, oh, well, I think it did. I'm not going to send you another one. No, just, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your price is okay to start with, you say, okay, yeah, it didn't turn up. There you go. There's, there's a, a replacement. Job done. Happy customer. Um, make, makes life a lot, a lot easier. <laughs>